Well, Hurricane Ian is coming and going. We are kind of like protected here, but Hurricane Ian is 300 miles north of here and we need to still get through that. So we need to get around Hatteras during all of this. And how do we plan to get around Hatteras if there's a hurricane basically at Hatteras? <laughs> so, um, this, this episode is going to be how we plan, what we do, and when is it safe to go, when is it not safe to go, and how do you plan anchorages in, in a hurricane. So this is going to be for us also a very new learning curve, but let's see whether our 26,000 miles of experience crossing oceans and so on, whether this will help us. So come and join us and let's see how we plan this out. Before we go into this video, I think Pietro and I just want to say this is <laughs> this is a serious um, issue. We don't take hurricanes lightly and if you look at the damage um, that has been done already in Florida, we really feel very, very sad for the people that has been the unlucky ones. There's some lucky ones and then when some people died, I think the death toll is already in double numbers. So it is a very serious thing and we have our condolences for the Floridians and I think maybe Charleston might also have a couple of incidents coming very soon to them. But that said, we are not saying go out in a hurricane and go sail in a hurricane. That's not what we say. We also don't say just go and anchor in the path of a hurricane. If you can, get out of the way. And this is what this episode is all about. Is how do we plan to get out of the way? How do we plan to be safe? How do we plan that if we do go through address, what is the best ways of going through there? Even though there's a hurricane. So we, we are looking for opportunities to miss hurricanes and not really go and look for them. So this is what this episode is about. We're here in a lovely town of Reedsville. And as you can see, the clouds, it's really telling us that there's a big big system somewhere and that big system is Hurricane Ian which is around 300 miles that way so we are quite safe here and as you can see it's very very protected very close um, lots of high trees last night we we came in quite late in here and we anchored and it's in three meters of water and we did not experience, I think the highest that we felt here was around 22 knots inside here. Now it goes up maybe to about 25 every now and then. The mast is higher than the tree. <laughs> so, but we are well protected here. I think we will be good. Um, we might need to put out some more chain, more scope. And, but it's, I think we're good. Cape Hatteras is one of the most dangerous points from what every American that we met that has done the East Coast, everyone was telling us, be careful for Hatteras. So we, when we came up, it was nice and clear weather, it was good. Um, we even had to motor past there on a Gulf, the Gulf Stream. So it was, it was kind of like cool. Uh, we didn't experience any big problems, but now going back is a problem. So let's see why going back is a bigger problem than actually coming up the Gulf Stream. So while Pietro is making for us some um, pancakes, I think this we call, Americans call this pancakes, we call it flapjacks. I'm going to go quickly through the planning, what we do. And while we're in a protected bay, it's a good time to really have a good look at Hurricane Ion and what the weather systems we are looking at and what is the weather models that we're looking at, what's the difference between the different applications and so on. So let's fall in. Let's first talk about the different weather apps. So on our phone we can have various weather apps and what I do have <coughs> is I have windy over there and then I have the NOAA one and offshore the predict wind one so the offshore predict wind which work, works with the, 
the Iridium Go and then the one that's working with a full internet connection which we, we can use now because we have Starlink so <coughs> these are the, the four apps that I'm using but just to be clear it doesn't matter what application you're using it is about the weather model that we're talking about so let us look at the various weather models I was not perfectly clear on the app so the various apps will load the model that you request if it's a free app it will normally load the GFS model which is normally called also the American model and if you have a paid app like predict wind or the professional windy then you can select between the different models like the European model the US model Spire model and different models so it doesn't matter really what app you're using if you have a paid one normally you can select between various models if you have a free one then it is so it's kind of like what app you're using but most of the free ones they use the American model and the prediction models uh, predict we to have this thing to say we can go to validation then we can see what the different models have done over the last couple of oops hopefully it's still there now <clears throat> so if we look here if we look at the address right so we're now currently just looking for address and the station was Spiny Island so I'm looking in that in, in in vicinity what was the best weather model for that on this side this is just last week's wind speed and HRR, Spire, GFS, NAM, EC I'm going to focus a lot around GFS and ECMW. I like Spire. Spire you will see is quite often very correct and very good. But for now, <coughs> let's okay, let's focus on those three. GFS, EC. GFS is the is the global forecasting system which is the known as the American model. It is free, so most of the applications that is free you will find the GFS model at least. Then the EC is the European model, and the European model is paid, a paid model. So if you have an a, it's like Windy Pro or Predict Wind or that you pay for, then most probably you will have also the European model. Now if you look here, the, for the whole month, Spire was quite high, EC was quite high, and then GFS is lower, or at, at the fourth position. And the wind direction, uh, UKMA was quite good, and surprisingly, the predict wind EC model was also good, <laughs> better than EC and Inspire. You can see the wind direction GFS was quite low. That is for for the month. Let's look at the seven-day one. So, same station, Atras. So last week, the whole week, they wander all the way down. You can see throughout, GFS was quite good for the whole week the wind speed for the week the wind direction uh, GFS is fifth, fifth and then NAM EC yes the European model they were fourth and over the wind direction they were also fourth and the whole month you can go through that um, so I'm going to use then EC we like EC they quite accurate before I even have started with the video it already did down flapjacks so we're going to have this first. Now that we know the different models, let's go back to our predicament here of planning. So we need to get past the address and we need to find and also time it. So now that there's this big huge hurricane, let's see whether we can find a way through to where we want to go and when and what timing and what we're looking at what all the tools available for us okay so the first thing that we need to try and do is get south so that we're positioned um, to go faster around the corner if we need to go and that means we need to go from our current position down closer to the mouth of of the Chesapeake Bay it is about 60 miles nautical miles for us to go down so we need to time it right um, that will be around 12 hours if we start the morning very early then we can go through and we can maybe get a closer point um, closer to the mouth of Chesapeake so let's look whether we can find first that gap 
and if we can find a gap also where are we going to anchor because we also need to have a very good anchor for the next wind if we look here at the wind maps I'm zoomed in now a little bit so we need to get here was here's a Potomac River so we are somewhere here we need to get from here down and Norfolk or we're going to go to Hampton somewhere to Hampton so let's see if we can can do that if I press play here um, this is not just the wind you can see the hurricane is still coming in quite pulling quite a lot of, of wind and, and moisture in here is something happening here okay let's check this out I'm going to pause it so we need to get from there down all the way here so we will have some wind up here and because the previous wind was was like that the waves will be like this so it will be very confused sea state and the time is around six o'clock so it's still dark and around here is a lot of unlit fishing traps and and there's also crab pots and I don't know, we don't see lobster pots but there's a lot of buoys hanging around and in poles that doesn't have any lights on um, so this is not a good place to, to do this in the dark so we need to be at least say seven o'clock then we can start looking and if it is raining like this uh, it will be dark so but from there from Saturday seven o'clock we might have okay so we can now maybe go 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 against the wind there might be a little bit of wind this is Saturday seven o'clock so then we should be at the bottom the wind will be right from front but maybe we can use the engine the wind was coming in this direction so it's I think we will be fine to get there but we have to make it very from very early to very late and use the engines I'm sure we will need to use the engines we will cannot we will not be able to sail that fast in this wind let's just go further we say Saturday and we can only use day, day hours so let us see let's look here it is now seven o'clock now this wind is usable 16 17 knots but look at this it's getting way 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 big so Sunday this is the evening this is the conditions and you can see over here it's going to be a little bit crazy 23 knots it's downwind we can maybe do it out here is already 36 knots I'm not sure we want to do that 34 35 36 37 that's a lot of wind and I think the the waves is going to come around the corner and also eat us so this is going to be quite crazy here for the second half of the journey so we need to get out of Norfolk basically out of Chesapeake Bay coming around the corner and then try to to hide here at Cape Outlook so that is Hatteras we need to get around there so we are say we can look now at the normal rain rain the normal wind map so if you can recall Sunday we're going to have a lot of wind coming from the front and you can see it's coming in so we're not going to move anywhere on Monday let us see how much it is uh, wind speed 26 knots oh and the gust is going to be 29 39 or oh, 40 knots of wind not good so let us see when we we can start easing up on, on on the sails so that's 26 we can do that casting 30 casting 25 uh, 27 26 25 so this we can do so let us see how this looks so if i go now to wind maps if we start going very close to the coast then we can actually get around and we can start using this wind even though that the wind uh, system is still there we can start thinking of using it if we're desperate but we're not desperate so let's see 
we can stay there for a while and now just because we decide we're going to stay stay a little while now you can see everything is now clearing up so by Wednesday Wednesday might be good so we can still come down the coast but I will tell you now why we will not get down the coast uh, so over here now the wind is turning in the direction I know so what do I know that you do not know if I go to tools and ocean data I can see the the current this is actually the Gulf Stream coming up here that is Cape Hatteras right over there so this little piece part here is we where we're going to need to pass through if we pass through this one here and the wind is blowing from the from the north the waves is going to stand up very high so it's going to be very very tough and this is why Atlas is regarded as the most dangerous point on the east coast the gulf is very close to the to the shore it's very fast it runs around 2.5 knots right there and if the wind is coming from from the north you will have very very short period waves very high very choppy it's not going to be good so we want to have the waves either the wind either coming from the south or from the coast so let us just 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 to see how close this is i'm going to switch now to navionics i added now at navionics i added exactly on the screen where that point is and that is where the pin is so you can see this is the shelf, the coastal shelf. It's coming, running up the coastal shelf and then start turning the Gulf Stream. If you check there again, you see, it's uh, the exact point at this moment. I'm going to zoom in here, exactly there. And this is where the stream, the Gulf Stream is coming. So that point was on the Gulf Stream. So the Gulf Stream is actually pausing here. So you need to actually get through here somewhere through the shoals to get around this point. And this is where the problem is. So the moment you're outside of this six point, oh, it's from the point, let's say from the point, that's eight miles, 8.1 miles. So the moment you're outside of this one, you in the Gulf Stream so you need to get past here and that is where the problem is so we want the wind to be coming from the shore so we want the wind to come from that side and this is why if we look at the weather routing so this will be very good to sail with but the moment you get that <laughs> current it's going to be bad so we want the wind to be much less and coming straight like that is already good so there maybe there that is bad that is very bad very bad so we have that little spot just that on Wednesday yeah so it's 20 miles plus 113 miles so that is 100 and say 140 miles so we, that is 24 hours for us to sail, 7 o'clock the next day, that's actually perfect. So we start at sunrise the previous day, and then at sunrise the next day we will be there. <laughs> it's going to be tough 21 knots of wind at least it's downwind so let's look at the gusts 30 knots of gust oh, I think I need a beer and just like that you can see we in the middle of the eye there is lots of clouds coming our way 
but it's so calm and sunny and everything looks perfect <laughs> but let's go ahead with our planning we need to still plan how we go down and we know there's still a lot of wind coming our way so we need to understand what so that's the other thing that you need to do almost constantly even if you planned we started this planning uh, yesterday actually two days ago yesterday I started filming it so you need to make sure that every day that's going past once every six hours when the weather models update you need to check what is the new predictions and whether your plan is still going to hold okay so let us quickly check whether our weather a plan so if we're going to leave tomorrow Sunday at seven o'clock so that's so no wind then we're going to get some wind around 10 o'clock we're coming down all the way to Hampton and we will arrive at Hampton around 7 o'clock it is kind of still as predicted at 7 o'clock okay the wind is still good so we will arrive there at 7 o'clock the next morning and the wind will be perfect for seven o'clock then on Thursday morning so we're still good on that so for now let us look at other tools that we're also using and this is the wave maps so let's go to wave maps and we see what what is the waves going to do for the same period of time Sunday I can see the waves is start picking up inside so when we arrive at 7 o'clock the waves outside um, in the Atlantic is going to be 2.3 meters and at Hampton around it will be 1.2 meters coming more or less from behind as we go in so that's going to be good now let us see if we start doing if we say okay on Wednesday morning seven o'clock we're going to leave okay so over here 1.1 meter and it's from the back so it's kind of like okay-ish then we need to go and you can see this is where the center is so the center these guys here is going to make it's just going to be a very confused sea state because that demon is generating waves all in a circular motion okay so let's go from seven o'clock to the next morning and the waves 2.6.2.7 and it's going to be from our quarter that is not always a good thing because the boat is going to do this funny snaky thing going around so but it's still more from behind than from the front so it will be it will be okay and then when we come around the Hatteras that's going to be against the current so we need to be very close but let's get closer to the time that we get to Hatteras that will be around seven o'clock tomorrow morning so let's for now say seven o'clock now you can see the Wi-Fi is 1.4 meters it's from the back but it will be like very choppy and very 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 sh you can also see 8 seconds okay 8 seconds that will be the big ones but I think there will be small ones in between as well but you can see as you can see they we need to be very very close to the address itself not to pick up the big waves there will be waves and then from there the current is away so we we can ride the waves and it will be fine at all Cape Lookout what is the rain saying? Okay, let's look at the overall picture so today Sunday oh, we're going to have rain no not nothing 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 Sunday at four o'clock oh Norfolk will have a lot of rain 
So we will have rain around anchor time. So Peter is going to be in the rain again. Huh. And then it gets quite hectic and then it goes away. So when we start on Wednesday morning, uh, fine, no rain, no rain, no rain, no rain, no rain, all the way down to Cape Lookout. So we've looked now at the wind, we looked at the gusts, we look at the wave maps, we look at the rain maps. So it seems that we might just just make it around the corner with the wind in the right direction, the, the current, so we also looked at the current. So all of that is aligning for us to be 7 o'clock Tuesday morning there. So let's see how that's going to work out in practice. Now that we looked at the, all the waves, we also need to find an anchor spot. So let's look for an anchor spot. It's, we're going to leave for Hampton, so let's look in the vicinity of Hampton. And I've already checked, looked a lot around here. And because there's a naval base, there's not, there's not much that you can do. So here's the whole naval base, the whole navy is here. That is navy. Um, if you look here, almost everything is just for better news navy. The one spot that I did see, and I watch it on, on. Um, the phone as well is this spot here. So it's right next to the Fort Monroe and is is in a channel. So we know the wind is going to come from that direction this this way. And it can even the waves can swing. So we will be kind of like protected here. So this is the anchor spot. Now something that the people I checked I checked on the um, the reviews. And the reviews is saying be careful for the, the cables which is in between the yellow the yellow markers so we should not anchor between the yellow markers so that's the only thing that we need to look out for that we don't go where the cables are so the rest is quite good now something that you need to keep in mind if you if you are going to anchor an hurricane like this spot that we are here not that i think we will anchor here in a hurricane but this spot is all around us is is well protected so the more trees you can get the better it is um, also if you look around us there's not a lot of debris that can fly if you look at the roofs they should not be corrugated iron because if those roofs are start flying then they fly in your direction and keep in mind because it is a circular storm the wind will turn most probably all 360 degrees so you have to look at every side um, whether there is debris that can fly into you or other boats here there was actually no other boat except for one that's over there so if that guy starts dragging it will drag all the way here but we know there's a little ridge in between so hopefully his anchor will get stuck there he will not come here but that's something that you need to look at so we are very very okay where we are here if we should get into anchor um, into a hurricane situation which last night was one of the things we we were well protected we saw 34 knots while outside it was up to 50 knots so this is it for planning let's see what we can do tomorrow morning seven o'clock at when a day starts coming light, we will lift anchor, we will go and we will keep you up to date. Um, you will join us on this journey and see how we go down. And also if we go around Cape Lookout, the address thing, um, we will, you will follow us.